Justice Department memos on detention, interrogation, surveillance and prosecution. These opinions were issued by the Office of Legal Counsel and advised the executive branch on the legality of a range of tactics in fighting the so-called war on terror. A few of these records have been made public, but many remain secret, including those relating to the Bush administration's domestic surveillance program. The investigative website ProPublica has compiled the first public database of all that's currently known about these memos. It's available at ProPublica.org. The Bush administration claims the memos had to remain secret for reasons of security and internal confidentiality. Don Johnson, Obama's nominee to head the Office of Legal Counsel, has been an outspoken critic of the Justice Department under the Bush administration. This is an excerpt of a speech he gave at the American Constitutional Society in October of 2007, discussing the key principles that ought to govern the Office of Legal Counsel. When providing legal advice to guide contemplated executive branch action, OLC should provide an accurate and honest appraisal of applicable law, even if that advice will constrain the pursuit of desired administration policies. So in short, um, OLC and the Attorney General have to be prepared to tell the President no, when that's what the law requires. Last but very far from least, avoid secret law. And here I quote, OLC should publicly disclose its written legal opinions in a timely manner, absent strong reasons for delay or disclosure. Now, of course, there are situations where secrecy is needed, um, such as to protect the identity of a covert agent. Um, but public disclosure is it's especially critical whenever the executive branch does not fully comply with a federal statute. That was Dawn Johnson, Obama's nominee to head up the Justice Department's Office of Legal Counsel. She was speaking before the American Constitution Society in October 2007. We're joined now uh, by two guests here in the Firehouse Studio to discuss the secret memos and if and how soon we can expect them to be released. Chisun Lee is an award-winning reporter, now with ProPublica. Her latest piece is at ProPublica.org. It's called Bush's Secret Counterterrorism Law Book and the demands to release it. Scott Horton staying with us of Harvard. Harper's Magazine. Um, welcome, Chisan, to Democracy Now! Explain these memos, how you got a hold of them, their significance. Sure. Uh, well, some of these memos have been public for some time, and the content of some of these memos, most famously the so-called torture memos uh, that were authored in 2002, leaked to the media and eventually made public in 2004, those have been very much debated. Uh, but in Speaking with some open government advocates, I was surprised to discover that actually the universe of memos that the Bush administration has said it has relied on for a lot of its most controversial counterterrorism policies, interrogation, detention, uh, claims of unilateral presidential authority, warrantless wiretapping, the contents of these memos remain withheld, sometimes because they're classified, the government has said, in FOIA litigation and freedom of information law litigation, or on a variety of privilege grounds, executive privilege, attorney-client privilege, uh, agency privilege, and so forth. And so what we did at ProPublica was survey the universe of these memos having to do with counterterrorism policy. Now, the Office of Legal, Legal Counsel passes upon many questions that have to do with executive agencies that don't have to do with counterterrorism. And so we try to identify to the best, you know, as, as much as is possible, given what we know, the universe of memos. We came up with about 11 that are public, many of them having to do with interrogation policies, the legality of them. And then a whole slew, uh, we came up with almost 40 that can be identified with some specificity by date, author, recipient, subject matter that have not been disclosed, but seem to have to do with warrantless wiretapping, um, military ability abroad to detain or interrogate in secret, and so forth. So we've compiled this database that uh, people can go to and look at by author, date, subject matter, and see what is known and see what is not yet known. And what most surprised you? Talk about the content of these memos. Well, I think the, the most discussed have been these so-called torture memos that were authored in uh, 2002. And these are the most famous one um, dated August 1st of 2002 that talked about 
the sort of definition of what would constitute torture. And this has been the subject of great public debate. Um, this is the one that was signed by Jay Bybee, who was the head of the Office of Legal Counsel at the time, and uh, has been sort of publicly established as having been primarily authored by John Yu, who is now professor at uh, Berkeley Law School. And this discusses in uh, detail that's been talked about a lot, the sort of threshold of pain where you would start to call interrogation tactics torture. And um, this is where we've heard about, you know, bodily pain amounting to what you feel when there's organ failure and that sort of thing. So this caused a great public outcry when it was released, when it was leaked to the media in 2004, shortly after the Abu Ghraib scandal broke and became public news. And just the public debate surrounding these memos and some subsequent memos, one that redacted some of or withdrew some of the torture definition but left in place some of the claims of presidential power, the fact that there was all of this public debate to us illustrates how important it is to have more of these memos be released if it's deemed proper by courts, by this administration, that we're not going to have um, risk to our national security by disclosing them, so that the public can talk about what these legal opinions really meant and if there are minds who disagree so that the public can hear the benefit of that disagreement. You have called Scott Horton for the prosecution of Bush administration officials around issues of torture and detention. Uh, Chisen Lee writes in her piece accompanying these memos, uh, she quotes Dick Cheney in a parting interview, television interview, touching on aggressive interrogation. Cheney saying, I can't claim perfection, but I can tell you we had all the legal authorization we needed to do it, including the sign-off of the Justice Department. He told Larry King, I got legal opinions that said whatever we're going to do is legal. And President Bush made almost exactly the same claim, which is essentially, in legal terms, it is a reliance on advice of counsel defense that's being set up. Uh, and I think, you know, the Office of Legal Counsel right now is being viewed by the Obama administration as a sort of crime scene. I mean, they're very concerned about what went on inside of this office. They very carefully selected three top-notch, three of the best lawyers of their generation to take over and run that department. And then one of the first orders that President Obama issued, uh, he instructed the government to disregard uh, office opinions issued by the Office of Legal Counsel uh, during the uh, administration of George W. Bush. That's a striking measure that has no precedent uh, previously. But uh, we've got to go back and look at the fact that, historically, lawyers have been prosecuted and imprisoned for issuing opinions like the opinions that were issued here, that enabled torture and enabled uh, the violation of the laws of war. And we also have opinions issued evidently well, we haven't seen them all, uh, that paved the way for uh, illegal, felonious uh, surveillance of American citizens by the National Security uh, Administration. And we have memoranda issued uh, that, that laid a basis for the program of extraordinary renditions, which was also uh, a felony a, a program. All these programs were shut down uh, by President Obama and the orders he issued in the first three days. But Obama, also Nancy Pelosi, have been quite clear, Pelosi more clear when she said impeachment is off the table, really pushing these issues aside. Dennis Kucinich notably continuing to call for prosecution of officials. He was calling for the impeachment of the president and the vice president. Um, what about this issue of looking back, not looking back and looking forward, as uh, President Obama is fond of saying? Uh, I think you have to listen to President Obama, and I think he means exactly what he says. That is, he is focused on his affirmative agenda going forward and doesn't want to be distracted by these other things. He's not said, no, I'm giving immunity or impunity to people from the prior administration. No, there'll be no criminal investigations of criminal acts. I think he trusts in process to run itself 
to its to run its course properly. And the only reason that process, criminal justice process, didn't run to its course properly before was there was political obstruction of that process, which we just saw in the last segment involving uh, Karl Rove. There were, there were criminal investigations commenced that were shut down by officials of the Bush administration. I think under Obama, we'll see that process run to the end. And I don't think we're going to see an effort by the administration of the White House to interfere with it one way or the other. Well, I want to thank you both for being with us. Last comment on how people can access these memos, uh, Chisa. Well, come to our website, ProPublica.org, and this will be a running feature of memos, both known and missing, and the missing ones will have as much identifying information as possible. We'll update this as possibly the new administration releases some of these memos. As Don Johnson has said, she believes that disclosure and public knowledge is very important. Thank you both. Chi Sun Lee is an award-winning reporter. She's with ProPublica.org. Uh, Scott Horton, New York attorney specializing in international law. He's also a legal affairs contributor to Harper's Magazine, where he writes the blog.